in terms of this quantity clear now here m dot c c c is the minimum heat capacity now this term minus u a by m dot c minimum is known as number of transfer unit ntu which is a dimensionless term overall heat transfer coefficient surface area of the heat exchanger divided by m dot into c minimum now if you can ask me the questions you should ask this question to me without gossiping or chatting with your friends at the back sir if the hot fluid is the minimum fluid what could you have done now if the hot fluid is the minimum fluid first i tell you this expression will be same just m dot c and m dot h will be interchanging with each other so that in a generic formula i can write in terms of m dot c minimum and m dot c generic formula so this will interchange if m dot h c h is the minimum then it will be m dot h c h ntu is minus u a by m dot c minimum this will be ntu and this will be 1 plus m dot c minimum by m dot c similarly it will be 1 plus m dot c minimum by m dot c but how to do it just interchange here i will start again i started with cold fluid as the minimum fluid hot fluid as the minimum fluid i will take m dot h ch this is not all i will first take secondly i will not th2 that is the second catch here th2 will not be substituted from this equation tc2 will be substituted and in that case tc1 will not be added subtracted th1 will be added and subtracted this is having a rhythm good boys can understand this thing better immediately by intuition here we will take m dot h c h as common then it will be 1 plus m dot h c h by m dot c c c here t h 2 will remain as it is t c 2 will be replaced in terms of other temperatures from here t h 2 t h 1 and t c 1 and after that i will add and subtract t h 1 and in that case i will use the definition of epsilon as th1 minus th2 divided by th1 minus tc1 because the definition of epsilon is the change of temperature for the minimum fluid and the change of temperature maximum change of temperature available in the heat exchange now if you write in a very generic fashion this will be like this a generic expression is like this if i make a very shortcut compact form by defining a parameter just now if i define it like this m dot c as the capital c that means the capacity rate or simply the capacity and m dot c m dot c c c c c c is the c c c and m dot h c h is equal to c h and if i define c as the ratio of c mean by c which may be either this by this that means this by this or this by this depending upon the case in that case the expression will be very simple it looks like simple expression remains same 1 minus exponential minus n to u where n to u is minus minus u a sorry not minus sorry n to u is a scalar quantity dimensionless m dot c minimum that means c minimum with this nomenclature where n to u is c n to u into 1 plus capital C and therefore here it is 1 plus capital C this is the expression where capital C is the ratio of the total capacity that means m dot C specific heat 
ratio ratio of the total capacity what is the ratio minimum to the other one that means c mean by c so this is the expression and this expression is for parallel flow counter flow expression will be again a tricky and that i leave to you to do the counter flow expression in both the cases that is left as an exercise and the expression will be epsilon is equal to 1 minus exponential function of minus ntu into here it will be 1 minus c and here it will be 1 minus c into again exponential minus ntu into 1 minus c. Now you see that in condensation and boiling I told one of the fluids will be parallel in case of condensation the hot fluid is a parallel line in case of boiling the cold fluid is a parallel line and parallel line means temperature does not change and I told qualitatively that counter flow and the parallel flow remain same but now mathematically you see that for a condensation and boiling problem this one of the fluid specific heat tends to infinity the fluid which is boiling and the fluid which is condensing see infinity I showed you earlier in the figure which means that C is equal to C mean by C that means this higher C tends to infinity because which tends to infinity that will be always higher no question of calculation that means an intelligent boy will tell that for boiling condensation the ratio which you denote as C will be always 0 and if you put C 0 in both the expression we yield the same value epsilon is 1 minus exponential minus nt this is the argument nt if you put C 0 because the ratio is always 0 because the higher space heat capacity capacity rate whatever we call the product of m dot c is tending to infinity which is a hot fluid cold fluid ka mamla nahi it is not hot fluid cold fluid which one is higher which one is lower okay clear but here one thing is very much open that if I do not know the temperatures explicitly then what we can do when we know the NTU because area we know overall heat transfer coefficient we know and the mass flow rate and specific do we know we can straight away find out the effectiveness and when the effectiveness is known I can find out the temperature clear so therefore this is a case where the rating will be done explicitly no iterations rating means the size is given we have to find out the heat transfer that means all four temperatures are not known explicitly clear any problem ok so we can find out the epsilon and say whenever we find out the epsilon ok th1 and tc1 all right chalega then from the definition of epsilon I can find out the temperature difference of the minimum fluid that means heat load ajayega the temperature difference of the other fluid will also come so therefore where rating heating load and cooling load is not done but size is given NTU epsilon method is an explicit method to find out effectiveness but of temperatures are found but where the temperatures are given sizing is to be made LMTD is useful because from here knowing epsilon NTU as a function of epsilon will be little difficult you understand this may require tedious calculations or iterations so I will take another maximum half an hour uh, to solve two problems to make this thing clear but before that I will tell you one thing that before uh, solving a counter flow exchanger now now we will solve two problems on heat exchanger which will demonstrate 
our understanding of the discussion that which have been made just now in the earlier class. Now the first example is the a counter flow heat exchanger of heat transfer area 12.5 meter square. Immediately it should strike that it is not a sizing problem. That means size is given. That means a rating problem. Is to cool oil whose specific it is 2 kilojoule per kg degree Celsius, 2000 joule. It's taken from a book. They have not written in terms of kilojoule. With water whose specific heat is 4.17 kilojoule per kg degree Celsius. Now oil is the hot fluid and water is the cold fluid. The oil enters at 100 degree Celsius. That means in our nomenclature TH1 is 100 degree Celsius. Here it is written TH in. And the flow rate of the hot fluid that is oil is 2 kg per second. While the cold fluid enters, that is Tc in, which is in our nomenclature, Tc1 is 20 degrees Celsius. And the cold fluid flow rate, Mc, is 0 0.48 kg per second. The overall heat transfer coefficient is given. This will be given for both the cases, rating and sizing problem. 400 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Calculate the exit temperature of water and the total heat transfer rate Q using both LMTD and the epsilon NTU method. Now an idiot will start with the NU epsilon LMTD method, but it is told we have to do it. If nothing is told, so I can start with LMTD. Now you see LMTD, how difficult it is. Now what is M dot H? You tell me M dot H is 2 kg. What is that? Where it is written 2 kg per second? 2 kg per second, yes. 2 into what is the specific heat? 2 kilojoule. I am writing in terms of kilojoule, it will be cancelled in. Then TH1 is what? TH1 is the oil enters 100 minus TH2 equals to what? Water enters <coughs> 20 degrees Celsius, 0.48. I have to find out Q. Bolo. Good. That is the mistake. I was discussing with these people. I could not rectify, though my teachers told me several times. What is this flow rate? Flow rate is 0.48 into 4.17 there. No? into Tc2 minus 20. Now LMTD is delta T2 minus delta T1 divided by ln delta T2 by delta T. Now what is delta T2? TH2 minus Tc2. Nothing is known. Counter flow TH2 minus TC1 and delta T1 is TH1 minus TC2. Now I cannot find out the LMTD because I do not know this TH2 TC2. So what to do? We assume TC2 or TH2. Let us assume TC2 60 degree Celsius. Let us assume it will be heated to a temperature, I assume something, it is less than 100 definitely, which may be more than TH2, it cannot be more than TH1, let us assume 60 degree. Then I find out this and I find out TH2. So TH2 and TC2 is found out. And I give that one superscript, that is the first iteration. Accordingly, I find out LMTD with the first approximation of this. And when LMTD is found out, these two are known, I found out Q as the first approximation. When Q is found out, I can use this with the unknown TH2 or this with the unknown TC2 and try to match this TH2, TC2 found out 
with the earlier value. If they are differing, again we put that value and we change this as superscript 2, next iteration and go and this loop will go until and unless these two matches. And finally, depending upon your gauge value, if one gives a gauge value by the magic of PC shortcut, 85.6 degree Celsius, then he does not have to do any iteration. That means he will get a value of TH to such and LMTD such and accordingly Q which will exactly match this value. But it is very difficult, only the magician can do. So some iterations will be there. But this problem, if you solve by NTU epsilon method, so therefore we see this is a tedious method. But what is NTU LMTD method? NTU is known. What is NTU? UA C minimum. What is C? 2 into 2, 4. And this is 0 0.48 into 4. That means which one is minimum? That one, right hand side is minimum. So if you do that minimum, then you find out C minimum uh, NTU, sorry, NTU is UA by C minimum, yes. Then you find out NTU as AU. U is what? Huh? What is U? What is A? 12.5. And what is C minimum? I just see that multiplication is difficult for me. 2002. That means 2 because this a joule unit has to be there. Because this unit has to be consistent. Here I can write kilojoule because both this side it will be balanced. Be careful with this unit. NTU is a non dimensional. U is what per meter square K or meter square degree Celsius. A is meter square. So here C minimum has to be in. Joule, don't be that smart to put it here. Finally, come with a wrong result. I will be giving 80 percent marks. If you are happy, then it's all right. So, therefore, NTU, sorry, NTU comes out to be what? Where is NTU? Two point five. That means if you clear it into, then epsilon for a counter flow heat exchanger expression, there if you put NTU, it is an explicit calculation by a small calculator, you can do it and epsilon comes straight forward. Value of epsilon comes 0 0.82. Now when epsilon is 0 0.82, epsilon will be what? Epsilon will be the temperature difference of the minimum fluid Tc2 minus 20 divided by Th1 minus Tc1. That means maximum temperature 100 minus 20. And this gives Tc2 is equal to 85.6 explicitly done. So you see that a rating problem is explicitly done by this, but this that means if anybody is, do you feel that the LMTD method is not at all valid or you cannot do it, it for the rating problem? No, no, you can do it, but it is not explicit. And in today's world, both are almost same. By putting into calculator or just making a small program and do it, nothing is there. But it is explicit and there it is implicit by iteration. That is the only difference. Now the next problem. Hey. Problem 2. They go. This was an interesting problem. Problem 2 is also interesting. Water is heated from 30 to 90. Two temperatures are given. 
in a counter flow double pipe heat exchanger water flows at the rate of 1.2 kg per second that means total load is given the heating is accomplished by a geothermal fluid which enters the exchanger at 160 degree celsius at a mass flow rate of 2 kg per second that means everything is explicit we know all the temperatures the heat transfer ho gaya heating fluid accomplished geothermal exchanges at 160 degree and mass flow rate everything is given because by heat balance we can find out the exit temperature of the geothermal fluid okay specific heats are not given no specific heat is given at the end the inner tube is thin walled and has a diameter of 15 mm thin wall this is a extra language that means we neglect this wall resistance it is not required because overall heat transfer coefficient is given if the overall heat transfer coefficient of the exchanger is 600 watt per meter square degree celsius determine the length of the heat exchanger required oh that's why it has given thin because area has to be found out then area divided by pi d is the length that's why the thinness is required otherwise it will be difficult the specific heats of water and geothermal fluid has given use both the lmtd and epsilon here this is the reverse lmtd is very simple epsilon into u star why because the temperatures are known let me write very simple tell me what are you dictated i will write water is 1.2 or the hot fluid first hot fluid is what is the flow rate to you tell me 2 into you tell me you dictated me i will write i will not see the first heat balance 2 into 2 into 4.3 correct into 160 Minus pH two is equal to what? One point two into four point one eight into ninety minus thirty. What is the value of pH two? Nobody can tell without calculating it. So pH two, sorry, this problem. pH two is one twenty point one zero. 120.10 degree celsius then delta t2 sir 120 ek kya hua 125 i am sorry one sorry 125.10 minus 30 is equal to 95.10 this is meaningless but still i am doing delta t1 is th1 160 minus tc2 that is 90 that is is equal to 70 degree with this value the lmtd will come as 81.91 degree celsius this is the mean temperature log mean 81.91 degree celsius okay then a is q is u at lmtd q by u u lmtd lmtd q by u lmtd u into lmtd in the denominator so q is this one either this one or this one you put u is given what is the value of u u is 600 watt per meter square degree celsius and lmtd is 81.91 degree celsius which gives a if you put this value which gives a as what is the value of a 6.12 meter square 6.12 meter square and l is equal to a by pi d and d is given as diameter is 15 mm we have to put into meter that means 0.15 meter and a is meter squared this finally it is thin wall so diameter outer and inner is same and finally we get l is equal to 129.8 so this 
so therefore this problem is just the reverse lmtd is straight forward clear because it is sizing problem rating is given but to do it with epsilon ntu what you have to do because here epsilon is known but ntu has to be found out here epsilon is known ntu has to be found out in epsilon ntu method what is epsilon epsilon is known you tell me what is epsilon minimum fluid is which one what is epsilon minimum fluid is m dot c dot this is the minimum fluid so epsilon will be 90 minus 30 divided by 160 minus 30. So epsilon will be where they have done epsilon business. Oh, however, leave it. 90 minus 30. This is the this is the minimum. So this is the epsilon. So epsilon becomes what? 0 0.461. Okay, now problem is that epsilon is known, you have to find out what surface area and finally length. That means I have to express NTU is a function of epsilon. For that, little more labor you have to put. We express epsilon as a function of NTU. You. you remember that function if you just right other way ntu is equal to 1 by c minus 1 into ln just you do it epsilon minus 1 divided by epsilon c minus 1 what is c c is c mean by c c mean by c we express epsilon as a function of ntu epsilon as a function of ntu that we expressed. Here I write by rubbing this. If we recall, just now I told that epsilon in a counter flow is what? 1 minus exponential minus NTU into 1 minus capital C. That is the ratio. Into 1 minus capital C, again exponential minus NTU into 1 minus C. So you see this expression, this capital C is C mean by C. You have to first from here express NTU. This is tough but it can be done. Sometimes this is not possible to express NTU as a function of epsilon explicitly. Then this problem fails. That means then you have to go for iterations again. But luckily, with a little labor, one can rearrange this, rearrange this function to do that NTU is this. Now, when epsilon is known 0.46, you just put it and ratio C mean by C max or C, you know, and you straight forward find out NTU and find out area. Area will come exactly the same 6.12 meter square and L will be that one, which I got 129.87 now you have been able to appreciate that lmtd method is simple and explicit when we go for sizing rating is given but when the size is given ntu epsilon method is explicit and simple because we have an explicit relationship of ntu with epsilon where from epsilon we can find out the rating which was which is unknown for this type of problem so with this, I will finish my lecture on heat exchanger. Okay.